this video, we're going to be looking at deriving the formula for the area of a polar region. So it'll be useful for us to recall that the area of a sector of a circle is this formula A equals one half R squared theta, where R would be the radius of the circle and theta would be the central angle. So this is giving the area of a sector of a circle here with um, central angle theta and radius R. Okay, we have this formula because it is a fraction, okay, of our total area of a circle. Okay, so that we'd have two pi would be going around the whole circle. I want um, the fraction theta out of two pi times pi r squared, the area of the whole circle. So that's how we get the one half um, r squared theta. Okay, so let's see how this um, formula is going to come into use. Notice that. What we have here is that our region R is going to be bounded by a polar curve, R equals F of theta, between two angles, theta equals A and theta equals B, where F is a positive and continuous function, um, and we have B minus A being between 0 and 2 pi. That's to make sure that we're not going to be um, counting our region more than once. So we want to think about how we can find the area of this region. So let's give ourselves a picture to think about. So let's say my polar curve is just doing something like this. Let's say this is my r equals f of theta. And I have my boundary lines here between theta equals a and theta equals b. So I have this region that I'm trying to find the area of. Okay. So remember that when we tried to find um, the area under a curve y equals f of x between the curve and the, the x-axis. We looked at dividing up that region into lots of subintervals and then approximating the area on each subinterval by a rectangle. Here we're going to divide up this region into lots of subintervals, but we're going to approximate the area of each subinterval by the area of a sector of a circle. So this formula here is kind of um, taking the place of like our rectangle area formula when we were doing um, area problems just under uh, curves y equals f of x. Okay, so we're going to start here by dividing our interval AB into n subintervals. Okay, so we're thinking about dividing this up into lots of different little pieces here. Um, Instead of having a delta x be the little width of the interval, I'm going to have delta theta be the little angles here that I'm creating of each of these um, little sub-intervals here. So my delta theta will equal some theta i minus theta i minus 1. Okay, so I'm thinking I have some theta i minus 1 angle and then a theta i angle in there where i could range from, from 1 to n. Okay. I can call delta A sub i the area of the ith um, region. Okay, so this is the area of the ith region, little region that I created. And this is going to be approximately the area of a sector of, let's see, of a circle. Okay, just like when we were doing our regular kinds of curves where I had some y equals f of x, right, and we broke this up, okay, I had to approximate um, one of my little regions here by a rectangle. We're going to think about approximating one of these by a sector of a circle, okay? So we can say that our delta a sub i here is approximately one half our radius squared. Well, the radius is the distance from the center here to our curve. Um, R equals f of theta. Okay, so I'm going to have f of theta i star. Remember we used to use um, x i star to represent a point somewhere in the i-th subinterval here. Now I'm going to use this theta i star just as my notation to say this is some angle between theta i and theta i minus 1. Okay, and then the central angle that I have is my delta, oops, my delta theta. Okay, so what can we say then? Well if that's the um, approximate area of one of these little pieces, 
okay? Then my total area of the region is approximately the sum from i equals 1 to n of all of these areas of 1 half f of theta i star squared times delta theta, okay? And then we know that I could take n going to infinity, okay, and say, well, the limit as n goes to infinity of my sum is actually going to be equal to my area, okay? So I'd have this limit of my sum up to n of 1 half f of theta i star squared delta theta, okay? And then I recognize this as a limit of a Riemann sum, so I know this is equal to a definite integral here over my interval from a to b of 1 half f of theta squared, and then this delta theta here becomes the d theta in my limit. Okay, so this gives us our formula, okay? We'll say that our area is equal to this 1 half f of theta squared d theta, the integral of that, or sometimes we'll just shorten the formula and say it, the area is this integral from a to b of 1 half times the radius squared d theta, and then we'll replace r with whatever our polar curve is in our given problem. Okay, so this goes over the derivation, so you see a little bit where that comes from. Um, the next several examples are going to show how we can apply this formula to actually find some areas of polar curves. Um, and we'll see that a lot of times the tricky part will be determining what the bounds need to be for us to capture the area that we're interested in. So keep watching to see several examples.